New Hampshire Motor Speedway. It may not be one of the most loved tracks on the NASCAR calendar. In fact, every year there's a small cheering section of fans who would love to see it go. But Latin New Hampshire's nearly perfect one mile oval, nicknamed the Magic Mile, holds a special spot for racing in New England. Most associate racing's roots in the southeastern United States or in the Midwest, but New England's racing heritage is every bit as rich and varied. In 1964, Keith Breyer opened a 1.6 mile road course called Breyer Motorsports Park on the site of his local amusement park. The road circuit used the natural terrain to create a flowing course, circling up and around neighboring hills and through a small marsh area. Racing began with local SCCA sports car events, but it was ultimately motorcycle racing and the Laconia Classic, which became the circuit's signature event. NASCAR also made an appearance at Briar with its regional North Touring Series, both in 1984 and 1985, the latter of which is still available to watch on YouTube and is a great race. But by the late 80s, the facility was showing its age, holding the yearly motorcycle races, but falling into disrepair. Local racing organizer Bob Bear, famous for the Oxford 250, was looking for a place in New England to build a super speedway. And the Briar Motorsports Park, sitting just outside the state's capital of Concord, New Hampshire, in a town already used to loud noises and racing, was the perfect site. Bear and his small team, without the use of formal engineers, plotted the course themselves. A one-mile oval sat over the top of the site of the existing road course. Construction began in earnest in late 1989, carrying through the harsh New England winter with the goal of being ready by summer 1990. The craziest part of all is there was no certainty that any major racing series would come to the facility, but in true build it and they will come mentality, Bear and his team pushed forward, opening the circuit on schedule in July 1990. But luckily for Bear and his team, the Boston market was seen as a lucrative opportunity for NASCAR and the New Hampshire International Speedway, the perfect venue to race. In its opening year, NASCAR sanctioned a pair of NASCAR Bush races, accompanied by the ground-pounding modifieds at the facility. Success was instantaneous, and in 1992, the CART IndyCar Series made its debut at the facility, and from 1992 through 1995, put on some of the best one-mile races the series has ever seen. But it was in 1993 that the NASCAR Winston Cup Series finally made its debut at NHIS. It was Rusty Wallace who picked up a win from the 33rd starting position in front of a packed crowd of well over 100,000 fans, a total which quickly grew in subsequent years and firmly established itself as the largest sporting crowd in New England. But despite the rapid success and enjoyment by locals, New Hampshire Motor Speedway has been one of the most hated tracks in NASCAR history. In one camp, there's criticisms of the racing being boring and lacking action, the flat one-mile speedway not lending itself to the side-by-side -side racing that NASCAR fans are used to. In another camp, you have those who complain about the circuit safety, it being the site of two fatal NASCAR accidents in the year 2000 with Kenny Irwin and Adam Petty. But it's perhaps those fans who hold a grudge against New Hampshire Motor Speedway for stealing one of the North Wilkesboro Speedway dates in its debut in 1993. Many blame its owner, Bob Bear, for teaming with Bruton Smith and shutting down North Wilkesboro to give more dates to New Hampshire and Texas Motor Speedway. These criticisms are perhaps earned, but it doesn't hurt my enjoyment for New Hampshire Motor Speedway, my home track. Having gone to a handful of the NASCAR races, most of the IndyCar races, and too many modified races to count, every time I go to New Hampshire Motor Speedway, I have a great time watching racing. So now that we're coming up to what's been whittled down to one main event at the facility, I thought it'd be fun to do a race since I don't see very many folks racing around this track. And for this race, what could be more exciting than the first ever race at this facility, the July 15th, 1990 NASCAR Busch Series Budweiser 300. This race was a full 300 lap, 300 mile race at the facility, the same distance that the NASCAR Cup Series races today, but in the V6 Busch cars. The race was won by Tommy Ellis, but was notable for having an absolutely stacked grid of full-time NASCAR Cup drivers. I think all of them just wanting to see the facility, wanting to see this brand new track. You had folks like Harry Gant, 
Morgan Shepard, Rick Mass, Dale Earnhardt, uh, Young Dale Jarrett, Bobby Labonte, Ken Schrader, the 1990 Daytona 500 winner, Derek Cope, Kyle Petty, the list goes on and on. There's a lot of drivers in the grid. It was actually a 46 car starting grid. Something over 60 cars actually tried to qualify for the race. A lot of them Bush North teams as well at the time. An absolutely killer starting grid, and thankfully it's almost 100% recreated for NASCAR 2003 by Chris Aikens. Chris Aiken's car set for the 1990 Bush season is extremely well done, and I'm happy to show it off for a race like this. Uh, it's on the Cup 90 mod, which is a 1990-era Cup mod, but looks perfect for these cars, and not everything is on the perfect body style, but overall, the car set's amazingly painted, all the drivers are rated, and you could pretty much race the whole 1990 Bush season, but especially the New Hampshire and Oxford races, which nearly every car has been painted for. And we also have a great rendition of Loudon. You've been seeing what's called Loudon 1990 for most of this video. This is a rendition or a backdating to Loudon, New Hampshire Motor Speedway, as it was in 1990, New Hampshire International Speedway, done by Thunder 98, who's done a lot of great backdating of different tracks, especially in the 90s, that you can race on. So you'll notice in this version, some of the grandstands are smaller. They hadn't put in all the box seating and everything yet. All of the ground around the speedway isn't grass. It's still dirt because the track had just been finished for this race. And of course, it still has the swamp in the middle, which slowly disappeared until the mid 2000s. So in this race, we'll do 50 laps around the circuit with some accelerated fuel burn, so we should have to pit sometime during the race. And I'll be driving the number 26 Buick, which had the honor of finishing dead last in this race, driven by Davey Johnson with an engine failure. So hopefully I have a little bit better luck than that. But let's get started with this, the 1990 Budweiser 300. Gentlemen, start your engine! Right, rolling out onto the brand new New Hampshire International Speedway. This should be good. I'm starting pretty far back. I'm in 28th. It's a full 43 car grid. Like I said in real life, it was 46. So 43 is the most we can do in NASCAR 2003. But I have to take it easy the first few laps. It's tough to pass here, of course. Uh, but man, I love the look of these cars, both the shape of them, but also the paint schemes, all the colors and everything for uh, the 90s were just awesome. The Simplicity is what does it for me, but could race these type of cars all day, honestly. Come through turns three and four, I can see Dale Earnhardt actually on the pole. I don't even mention that he's in the race. He's on the pole. We'll see how well he does, but come through turns three and four. Green's out, kind of to run to the car in front, up through the gears, come up to fourth. We'll leave it there for the rest of the race come down into turn one, just giving everybody plenty of space on the opening lap. Cars coming up the inside. It's uncomfortable going too wide here. We'll come out onto the back straightaway and try to get a good run. Nowhere to go though. It'll be like this for a couple laps. This is pretty much how the modifieds race the whole race when they're doing it here, but just for the first handful of laps will be side by side. We've got Kyle Petty there in the 42 on the low side. We'll get by him though, try to push the 41 here. Have to let out the throttle for a second. Just try to arc it into the corner. You seem to watch cars trying to dive low on you. One almost tries to make it three wide there. It's tempting, but especially on this version of the track, it's not going to work. And I should mention that the track, this is a different profiling. If you're seeing this and think it's off, um, it's not just because NR2003 is an older game. Uh, this is actually pretty accurate. It's an earlier version of the track. The track itself was reprofiled in 2002 to try to improve the racing. So they split up the banking, I think, and made part of it that was a little more shallow and part that was higher banked and uh, I don't know if it's made the racing any better. They use PJ1 now anyway, but uh, back in the original track like it was here, all one banking through the corners, and it's a bit more narrow, I feel like. We'll come around the 79. The high line's working quite well. 
gladly stay on the outside if I can keep getting around cars like that. Try not to burn up the tires though. This track does, it's notorious for burning up the tires, I feel. Not only with yourselves, but if you slide the car, it really hurts. And I do have everything on two times wear so that we get a pit stop in this 50 lapper at some point. Should be towards the end, actually. We can go pretty deep into the run. I think in real life you can go over 50 laps without pitting. See if I can come on the low side then, try a couple moves there. We got Jack Ingram actually in the 11 car there in front. Ooh, get squeezed down by the 41. Paint the line on the bottom. Try not to shoot up the track, got on the throttle a little early there. Understeer coming off. Oh, he's gonna pull me. Let's see if I can dive it back in into turn one. He leaves me the spot open, luckily. There we go, we got Jack Ingram and Ken Trader side by side. It's a pretty cool bush race, I'd say. Slide up in front of the 41. 25 car, Jimmy Hensley as well. These all be names I know folks who are big NASCAR fans in the 80s and 90s will know quite well. Tommy Ellis in the 99 up there as well. All right, see if I can get on the side of Ingram here. Hopefully he doesn't cut up in front of me. He does. Ooh, blocks me like a pro to get on the brakes quite early to avoid spinning him out, crashing myself. like this is how the folks making them are able to find pictures even of the cars. That Ken Schrader car, the 52 there, it's a pretty interesting design. It's simplistic, but it's not one that you see, you know, everywhere online. There's a lot of cars like that, including the one I'm driving here, the 26. It's hard to find pictures of any of these cars, so it's impressive work. It's not only painting the cars. Now, the folks that do the modern cars these days, they do a great job, but for older stuff, it's just finding a picture of it that's clear enough so you can tell what a logo might be. That's half of the battle. Maybe a little bit of educated guesswork involved too, but if you can't find a picture of it, nobody's going to know anyway. All right, right on the back of Ingram now. I got around Schrader. He's right on my bumper. So we're coming to turn three. Oh, it's be so easy to stuff it in there. What I do touch the back of Ingram. Don't want to spin him out. That wouldn't be a good thing. I can already start to feel the tires going a little bit. We'll actually take a look. Nine laps in, just completing lap 10, so. Oh, and Schrader's gonna look up the inside. I gotta throw it out wide. Avoid getting spun out. The spotter calls it way too late when you're actually side by side in this. Been able to pull him on the straightaway there. Jack Ingram in front, and then Jimmy Hensley, and I think Tommy Ellis in front of him. So we're in good company, but we're only in 23rd. Technically only picked up three positions, but I lost a few off the line, so it's been a fight so far. Turns three and four, everybody's stacking up a bit. Pulled up a little bit on the group behind now, so luckily can just focus forward. It's always difficult racing on an oval or any track, really, where you've got somebody right behind you. Much more comfortable to just have to look in front. You know, and I didn't mention it too much in the intro, but this race, oh, so we get squeezed out from Ingram there. Come on, let's see if we can get a nice runoff. They're able to pick up the line off the corner so much better than me. I'm much better on braking coming in. Ingram's gonna run a little wide though to try to get around Hensley here. 
sneak up the inside, side by side with Jack Ingram on the back straightaway. He's going to pull just ahead, but I should still have the line coming into three. Break as late as I can. Bill Bear. Right, nice run off the corner. He's actually a little bit better than him. Come down to turn one, try to break late again. Hensley in front, though, slowing me up just a little bit. There we go. Able to get a nice run. Right on the back of Hensley now, see if we can go up the inside. Outside. Still there. All right, this is good. He's still got to work forward. A lot of cars to pass and not a lot of laps to do it. We got side by side with Hensley. We got Tommy Ellis in front. Actually, Bobby Hamilton in the eight car there. It's every driver almost is a name. It's very easy to swap ends on this track. Anybody that's raced here probably knows those two things. The tires burn off super fast if you don't have a neutral setup. You really almost need to be loose starting the race. And then it's very, very easy to hit somebody and spin out or even out, out, you know, break yourself coming into the corner and loop the car. Got the setup a little understeery for that reason. Got stacked up here behind Ellis. Let's see if I can come up the outside. Should have went to the inside that time. We got Hensley now coming back on me. Try to run the corner out. There we go. He had to pinch it, so he's a little slower coming off the corner. All right, Ellis is breaking early, but also sitting in the middle of the track. Got a nice run coming out. I had to lift off the throttle for just a second, but I'm right on him now. Ooh, is he going to look up the inside of Hamilton? Pull up the inside. Try not to take them both out. Bounce the throttle a little bit. Try to get the car loose. Can't really use the apron on this version. Oh, Ellis is so fast on the straightaway. Oh, Hamilton thinks better of it. Gets out of my way. Thank you. Oh no! <laughs> oh, and I ran wide and hit him. Oh, I almost lost the car there. That was very close. Run pretty deep into turns three and four. Banging doors with Tommy Ellis here. a little bit easier into turn one just try to get composure back i don't want to wear the tires out either outside able to sneak it up the inside though try to paint that line just able to get a better run on the corner the ai are really well balanced here i know a lot of folks like to set them so that you can win pretty easily or I see a, you know a lot of folks winning in, in videos and things but I like them to be very hard to race oh no Hensley able to get on me too as long as I've got folks to race that's that's what's fun about it I don't care really where I finish but want to try to at least get a top 20 top 15 here should be able to do it all right squeeze Hensley out stick up back behind Ellis Actually got Robert Presley up there in the 59. Oh, no. Oh, once again. Did it first to Hamilton, now to Ellis. Got Jack Ingram on the outside now as we'll come down to turn three. That was old. That was way closer to spinning out. Unfortunately, you have a limited wheel lock with NASCAR 2003 as well, so you can only turn the wheel, at least how I have it set, to, I think it's about 320 degrees, so it's easier to lose a car. You might be able to save something even more severe than that in a real car, but not here. 
is pretty much full lock. So things were going well, and now I'm starting to slip up a little bit. We're getting close to halfway. We'll have to figure out when we're going to pit. I think we have enough fuel to go actually quite deep, but it might be better to uh, pit a bit earlier, get new tires, see if we can make some progress that way. Just need to watch for the yellow flags. We've done a few races here. I haven't seen a whole lot of yellows, so as long as we don't get unlucky, we should be good. Hensley there breaking a little early. We got a whole pack here. Oh, and Ingram's going to come up the inside as well. Caught sleeping there for a second. Hensley's going to go to the outside. Maybe I can dive up the inside into turn one. to get in there but then getting off the corner you're kind of limited to when you can get on the throttle you just see the rocket by on the outside i don't know i don't believe that new hampshire doesn't have good racing thing i think it's just maybe a little bit slower looking from the outside but racing it's a ton of fun once you get the hang of the track yeah hamilton stuck up on the outside here oh hensley's gonna break Ingram throwing it up the inside, almost getting into me. We're door to door there in the middle of the corner. We'll come, we're just about halfway now. So, in theory, any time after this is good to pit, but we just need to watch for that oh, yellow man. flag. Side. It's just as packed as the first lap, but we're on lap 26 now. Just trying to make a little bit of progress. It's slow going, though. Oh, I got a nice run off the corner, but I'm just going to be boxed in here behind Hamilton. Trying to run it pretty deep into the braking zone without running into him. Ingram's back up the inside. Oh, we got Schrader as well closing back in. Oh, and I'm understeering a bit. Coming through the end of the corner. Schrader luckily not able to get there. Sneak in front of him a bit, try to block him. Come down into turn three. There's one car up there that seems to be holding almost the whole pack up. There's Ingram in front, launch up the inside of him. Still got Hensley, Hamilton side by side here. I think it might be Houston in the two. All player outside. Lachlan there in the 51. His son's doing some stuff these days. I try to get a good run off the corner. Should be able to gap Ingram here. We got Hensley now. He's going to take on the inside. Constantly watching the mirror, watching in front of me. Oh, Zangroom's gonna squeeze in there. Gotta fade up a little bit. Liable to run into me there. <laughs> I'm really trying to pinch him towards the bottom. Yeah, it works though. If you can squeeze him there, it can't quite get the run off, so you're able to pull ahead on the straightaway. It seems everybody got held up there for a second. Got a little bit of a run on Hensley here. As long as he doesn't try to dive down on Hamilton, try to get him. Ooh, and Hamilton into turn three. Why not get both of them? McLaughlin in front now. All right, what are we looking at here? 30 laps, 20 to go. Might want to pit here. Player high. I don't want to pit too far in front of everybody, but I'll also get more of a benefit from the tires if I uh, pit early. Ooh, some smoke there. Everybody's slowing down. I might get a yellow flag. All right, able to pass a few cars, though. I'll take that. Sneak in here behind Robert Presley on the inside of McLaughlin. Have 
to see if that causes a yellow or not. If a car breaks down or causes an accident, there's definitely smoke from a car. All clear. Outside. Let's see what it looks like coming by this time. Maybe we'll pit with 15 to go if everything's looking good. Should give us enough time to just use up a new set of tires to the greatest effect. Oh, a nice run into turn three, but a little bit loose actually on entry. It's the first lap in a while. I had no cars side by side with me. Yeah, it seems like the whoever broke down there cleaned it all up. We got off the track in time. So we got Presley here in front. Gap in the car behind a little bit McLaughlin there, my mirrors. in front of the two. I think he split that car with a few different drivers. Right on the back of Robert Presley then. Jeff Burton just up the track too with Rick Bast. It's kind of a who's who. Everybody wanted to see the new track in New Hampshire. Alright, get a nice run out of turn two. Quite enough to catch up to Presley, though. Uh, could have maybe thrown it on the inside. It'll go around the outside, then. If I can squeeze him down. Oh, he's right there with me, though. Just can't get on the throttle too early. I did that time. Understeer coming out of the corner. Got McLaughlin right behind me. All right, we should be... Maybe we should pit this time. Try to get a little bit of a jump on him. But do you lose a lap pitting? So you really put yourself in danger if there happens to be a caution, but... No, and he said the leader's on pit road, so we've got to pit this time. Try to get the most I can out of the tires. This will be a little hectic with cars pitting, cars going fast, but we'll try to come in. 45 mile an hour pit speed. It's always a challenge getting off the track. All right, first gear. All right, make sure we don't have any damage to fix or anything. Here's my pit crew. It's a little slow there for a second, but not speeding at least. All right. Get four tires put on. Hopefully, that's what everybody else seems to be doing. Oh, I don't know. Some cars pulling out there quick. Ah, oh, they're only getting two. Ah, this is really going to lose us some time then. All the way to spin the tires a little bit coming out. Some cars side by side here. They'll be going in their pit stalls. Had to let them by. All right, just ride right against 45. Hey, All right, I think I lost some time there. I didn't think they were going to take just two tires, but maybe that'll be good for us. I feel like I was really punishing the tires, so four's definitely got to be better. Up to fourth gear. Just try to take it easy for one corner here, make sure I'm not going to spin the car out. Here we go. Oh, there's a car crashing. Oh, no. Caution's out. All right, come by them on the front straightaway. Oh, man, I don't know if I would have unlapped myself or not. All right, so we're behind the 08. We'll have to see how it all sorts out with the caution. That might have lost us any chance of getting back to the lead or anything. We'll have to see. Here's the pace car, though. If I can pass the pace car, that'll be good. So we're going to do what I like to call the pretend wave around. And uh, I was actually the first car behind the pace car you saw there. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is actually speed around, which is illegal in NASCAR 2003. But in real life, I think they would wave around the cars. I'm sure everybody will tell me. And so I'm actually going to go around, get to the back of the pack. And uh, when I get a black flag, I'll just clear it for myself, which is something you can do in NASCAR 2003. So it's not really cheating <laughs> if they do it in real life, right? But here we go. So I'll just get the spotter telling me about 100 times that I need to let the pace car by. But once we get the black flag, we'll just clear it. And then we've got about 10 laps to go in the race. We'll have nine to go when we go green. So it should be hopefully enough time to pass a couple cars. I'm back in 36th now. 
we'll see how things can turn out. Hopefully, could pass a couple cars. Got pretty new tires on. I only did a couple laps on them. Should have a few beat up cars from the accident. Line up behind the green car. Take the cars off. Be ready. out, should have the black flag cleared, there we go, it's cleared, difficult to do while driving, but able to do it, alright, get up the inside here, try to make a little bit of progress, so we can hopefully get around a couple cars, everybody's screaming into turn three, this would be a chaotic restart this late in a race, and we got full view of everything. We'll come to the line, seven to go. Oh, cars everywhere in front. We got a car running high. I think it's Hamilton up there. Oh, he's holding everybody up. Maybe got a problem, flat tire or something. Hopefully it doesn't cost another yellow. It can end under yellow, which would be disappointing. Oh, a little bit deep into three, really high. There'd be a ton of marbles up here in real life. Luckily, you can get away with it. Got Kenny Bouchard up here in the 72 as well. Maybe he can get back up into the 20s, but not going to be a day we can win. Could have maybe got a top 20, top 15, potentially, had everything gone really well there through the pit cycle, but... That's racing sometimes. A lot of good fun racing around this track, though. Here's Ken Bouchard on the 72 on the outside. Tires feel a little bit worn already. I had a couple good laps on him there right after the pit stop, so that would have taken the shine off. Hamilton leaving the pits down low. It's always a lot of stuff happening here. Just drop right in behind Bouchard. Try to break him into turn three. Move like that would be so much harder to do in a real opponent because they'll be watching for you to do something like that, especially at the end of a race. Five more laps. Everybody's stacked up here. There's really not a lot of places to go, unfortunately. But now's the time to do some crazy stuff, so if we get the opportunity... to run high, should be able to pass at least a couple cars through that on the low side of the 08. Oh, just really trying to take advantage on the brakes. Car almost getting away from me there. Got Morgan Shepard, just a couple cars in front now. All right, just three more laps to go. Trader dives down low on Morgan Shepard in the number nine car. It's a pretty cool looking car. Texas Pete on the side. Side by side, the 08. Trader's gonna hold me up a little bit. Could lunge further in if he wasn't there. Just really grind up the tires now. No use in saving them. Ooh, I tapped him from behind just a little bit. We'll come down to turn one, though. Three wide once again. Ooh, try not to stack it. Just give him a little bit of gas mid-corner. Really ease up the tires. There we go. Cleared both of them through turn one. <laughs> not a bad move. We're coming to three and four, though. Right behind Morgan Shepard now. Get the white flag. One more lap to go. One more time, buddy. One more time. Great. Oh, Shepard so. leaves the bottom open. Can I get it in there? I didn't really lunge it as far as I could. Joe Nemechek right in front in the 87. But up 
the inside of Shepard will come down to turns three and four last lap. Should be able to make it stick on Shepard here. Come on, Nemechek blocks the inside. Build the air. Player high. Give him a little bump for good measure. There's Kyle Petty, who we started right next to. will come to the line, complete the Budweiser 300. Whew. Off. Fever run towards the end there. Up to 23rd, but not too bad. Great, you guys did an awesome job today. We'll, uh, we'll get this stuff figured out. We'll be all right. So it looks like Harry Gant was able to get the win over Dale Jarrett and Dale Earnhardt. So fun race to the checkered flag there. Not a great finish, but uh, overall it was a fun race. A lot of stuff happened during that. And you got, you got to see one of the ways, I guess, to cheat in NASCAR 2003. Kind of cheat, not really cheat. You can be the judge, but a lot of fun. New Hampshire, for myself, just one of my favorite tracks, just because it's my home track. And I understand the animosity towards it, with uh, especially with North Wilkesboro. But hope folks these days see how unique it is. I feel like it is a pretty unique track uh, on the NASCAR schedule. Really, the only other track in the United States that's like it, uh, or exactly like it, is Milwaukee. And that track is quite a bit different as well. Different banking. It's well, pretty wide, a lot wider than this version of New Hampshire. But uh, for NASCAR, they obviously don't go there. And so uh, this this track itself, I think it brings something unique. Um, you know, personally wish NASCAR still went there twice a year, especially still went to uh, New Hampshire in September since the weather is so much nicer then. But uh, I can I can see it being a once a year race and uh, I'm fine with that ultimately, too. So hope you enjoyed this. Um, I know New Hampshire's not everybody's cup of tea, but hopefully I shed some new insight on it that maybe makes you appreciate it differently. And who doesn't like some old 90s NASCAR Bush Series racing? So thanks for watching. I'll see you all again next time.